Today, we become legends. So I've talked about what I want to see from Smite 2 a bit already, but that was before the official reveal and we now know a lot more about what the game is trying to be and even have quite a bit of official info on how things are going to work. So I thought I'd compile all my thoughts on what I want to see from Smite 2 into one video. Let's jump in. So first up, I really want to see better creation tools, spectator tools, custom game tools, all that kind of stuff. Smite 1 is extremely lacking in all these regards and as a creator that makes highly edited videos on a regular basis, I have to do really janky workarounds to test things, get b-roll footage for videos, all that kind of stuff. Jungle practice is a lot better and more in depth than it used to be, but I think having the ability to spawn any god rather than just a selection of 5, the ability to give that god a build, having free cam and one button to remove your entire HUD for capturing more cinematic and clean footage or screenshots, a target dummy that calculates and shows your DPS above its head would be super useful for theory crafting and showcasing builds. I know there are some things they can't let us do in jungle practice like spawn bosses and whatnot because of server stability issues, but I feel there's so much more that could be done in terms of testing, content creation, spectator and custom games in Smite 2, and this is a big area where Smite 1 has left us wanting for its entire existence. It might not be something that you personally care about directly, but if you're watching this video, you probably watch other Smite content, and believe me when I say we're held back in terms of creating really cool stuff by what the game allows us to do. Having these kind of tools would just amp up the possibilities and quality of Smite 2 content that we can make for you guys. Next up is a more gameplay focused thing that will impact everyone, and that is less generic items. In Smite 1, I can probably count on two hands the number of items that have a unique interaction or are specifically good on a certain god for a certain reason, rather than just being a generic stat stick style item that is good on literally everyone. This is most obvious in ADC builds, but honestly every role just has one best build that you almost never deviate from, except in a small handful of very specific situations, like Gemma focus on Yanis or fail not on Chernobog for example. It feels like you could just copy paste a build from one god straight to another god in that same role and it would be optimal. I think Smite 2 should have a more diverse and interesting set of items that actually make you think about what you're buying and why, and give you more options to flex your build knowledge and explore cool interactions between your god and their item pool, rather than just buying the cookie cutter meta build for 3 months until high res decides to nerf it and buff something else and then everyone uses that build for 3 months and repeat. Items having more specific stats rather than just everything you could possibly need in that role, as well as more interesting passives that aren't just more stats with a condition or some damage on hit would make the game far more exciting, especially for the competitive side of things. Active items are a really great step in the right direction for this in my opinion, though I will say I think the effects on a lot of them I've seen so far from Smite 2 are just redesigns of the same boring passives we have on Smite 1 items just with an extra button press. This does give you more control over how you play which is a good thing in my opinion but I think the items could still be made more interesting than that. The next thing I'd like to see which has gotten a bit of attention recently is an actually functional clan system with more features than Smite 1's clans have. Of course clans have been balked in Smite 1 for a few years now and have essentially zero features beyond a few letters at the start of your name, but I think Smite 2's clan system should go even more in depth than it did at the peak of Smite 1's clans. Bring back clan chat, clan store, clan honor, all that kind of stuff, but do more than that. One idea I had a while back is essentially to make a weekly rotating clan shop that offers a randomized selection of items at a small discount, similar to daily bundles and Danza Burrow's shop, but specific to your clan. Imagine logging in and seeing people pop off in your clan chat because of a sick exclusive skin that's in your clan store that other clan stores don't get access to, and you do. There might need to be some sort of safeguard built into this to stop people just clan hopping to exploit the deals, like maybe you can only buy from the store of the clan you were in when the weekly reset happens, or maybe make it so you have to be in a clan for a minimum of a week to access their clan shop, but I think that would be a really neat idea to bring a bigger community aspect to clans. Maybe you could also have clan goals that you work towards, be that quests or a pool of clan points that the members work towards, and once you reach that goal, the whole clan gets something cool, like a skin with their clan icon on it, similar to the esports t-shirt skins, or bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, and master's colours for your clan tag, a special border around your profile icon if it's being used as your clan icon. I don't know, I'm kind of just spitballing ideas here, but I think there's a lot more that could be done with clans, and while high res don't seem to be that interested in doing anything with them because they don't make money, I think it's an important aspect of the game that brings a community feel, and I think Smite 2 clans should absolutely be a thing, and should be bigger and better than Smite 1's clans ever were. Next up, and this might piss a few people off, I want to see the god pool expanded to cover more folklore, legends, stories, and 
even modern creations of fiction. I love mythological gods and pantheons as much as the next guy, it's one of the major things that got me into Smite in the first place. But I think some of the coolest additions to Smite have actually been the more out of the box ones, like the entire Arthurian pantheon, Cthulhu, Gilgamesh, etc. I understand why the team are hesitant to go too crazy on this kind of stuff, as a lot of people push back when an obscure creature is added that isn't really a mythological god, but I think it would be genuinely cool if we got stuff like the Loch Ness Monster, Godzilla, Mall of Craftian Beings, hell, even SCPs. Okay, maybe SCPs is a little bit too far, but I think Smite 2 is the perfect time to try and push the envelope a bit in terms of what fits into Smite as a quote, god. Other MOBAs like League don't have this same limitation, I think it leads to some of the most interesting designs when the team is allowed full creative freedom on what they want to add, rather than being shoehorned into adding something they aren't really that passionate about. Speaking of League though, I'll quickly mention that Smite 2 needs a law reset in my opinion. Even as someone who loosely follows Smite 1 lore and has made several videos about it, it's convoluted, uninteresting, and most of the time comes in the form of giant walls of text that are about as engaging as watching paint dry. I'm not saying we should get Smite's version of Arcane because, frankly, I highly doubt hi res has even one tenth of the funding they'd need to make something so ambitious, and if they tried to, it would probably just turn out cringy and terrible and have a negative impact on the Smite IP. But we're seeing more and more that video games are becoming a part of the wider media ecosystem, and when done right, it adds so much to the world building and community aspect of games like League when other forms of media are explored. Sure, they probably can't make a nearly flawless animated show that maybe care about League characters when I never gave a shit about them before, but they could at least do animated shorts to go alongside the lore, or maybe even hire a small team of professional writers to make these lore segments more engaging and interesting. As it is currently in Smite 1, the lore feels like fan fiction written by a 16 year old in their bedroom after school. I don't mean to go too hard on whoever writes the lore for Smite 1, but god damn is it painful to read. Again, this is another thing that, especially if they didn't go whole hog with it and make an actual show, would only lose money for high res, so I don't really expect any of this, but I would love to see it nonetheless. Next up, bigger and better adventure modes and possibly even a permanent PvE story mode or dungeon mode. Smite is a pretty casual game all things considered. Only 5% of players have ever played even one ranked game, never mind grinding dozens to climb to the top. The game mode where all you do is mindlessly fight in a giant circle is just as popular as the competitive in-depth mode where you can truly showcase your skills and be the best. Smite 2 could change that, but honestly I don't think it will and maybe don't think it should. Being a casual fun fest is as much a part of Smite's identity as the gods are at this point, so why not fully embrace it and add a truly interesting PvE experience or at least more adventure modes? Again, and I feel like a broken record here, I know these don't make money, but does that have to be the case? If more effort was put into a true PvE experience that was available 24-7, then I'm more okay with that being monetized. Sell dedicated cosmetics for it, hell, even sell power if you want to. That might be a hot take, but if the PvE experience was solely co-op or single player, I genuinely don't mind them monetizing power in small ways. There's a fine line to walk there as literally letting people buy more damage on their abilities or more health with real money would hurt rather than help as it makes the game less fun. Why would you grind and get better when you could just spend $10? But if there was, for example, some sort of progression system built into, for example, a roguelike dungeon mode, I genuinely will not mind them allowing you to pay for progress on like god's skill trees or talents or whatever a little faster. I don't know, I'm going kind of hog wild here, but I feel like they should really embrace Smite's casual atmosphere and add a permanent PvE mode where you can experience Smite's awesome combat and gods in a more chilled out setting. And if not that, then at the very least bring back some cool adventure modes and learn from which ones were successful in Smite 1. So I'll just quickly mention this as we've already seen it in a small way in some of the reveal trailers and deep dives, but I really want to see new things brought to god kits and improvements made, as well as some full or partial reworks to existing problematic characters from Smite 1. Some gods I think are completely fine and don't really need changes. Some just need something small to make them feel fresh and different, for example Ymir's wall knockback change that we've already seen, and others need more significant redesigns of their kit such as Baka, Changa, Kronos, Nuwa and others, while some just straight up need a new kit entirely in my opinion as they have never worked well in Smite 1, such as Arachne, Freya and Bastet. Which characters need exactly what is something for an entirely different video and or probably smarter people than me that actually work on the game, but I think Smite 2 is the perfect opportunity to put some slightly flawed designs to the wayside and do away with completely unworkable ones. It will make the game more fun and less frustrating if done right. Next up, some changes to the core mechanics of the game need to happen in my opinion. We've already seen this a little bit with how magical and physical power are completely gone in Smite 2 and replaced with strength and intelligence, of which all gods can use both and scale differently. I think this is a great example of a positive change to the game's core mechanics. One that has always bothered me in Smite 1 is diminishing returns on CC. The 
fact that DR stacks last 15 seconds and refresh in duration every time you're CC'd is completely absurd in my opinion. No human can realistically track who has how many DR stacks on them at what time and it completely screws over certain setups and combos sometimes. Thor's ult combo is a perfect example but there are many more. Of course we don't want infinite CC chains either but I think 15 seconds is frankly ridiculous and you could solve the CC chain issues with a much smaller duration. The fact that someone can be hit by two CCs in one lane, rotate to another lane and still be DR'd is kind of insane. How am I supposed to know and remember that they got hit by a CC in a different fight I wasn't in 15 seconds ago? At least with CCR I can check and know how much the enemy has and adjust my playstyle and combos accordingly. DR takes away basically all player agency and it just feels bad to play against. It should be significantly reworked in Smite 2 in my opinion, along with some other core mechanics changes like the distribution of mobility and CC immunity, the balance of farming versus fighting and laning, snowball, a bunch of other stuff. But that's most of the major things I want to see in Smite 2 for it to be the best sequel it can be. Be sure to let me know your own personal thoughts down below on what you want to see in the new game and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.